Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, Sudan has officially joined the Abraham Accords and normalized relations with the Jewish state. Sudan is the third of four nations to agree to this historic treaty brokered by the administration of U.S. President Donald Trump. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin was in Khartoum for the signing of the Abraham Accords before he flew to Israel for a series of high-level meetings. The Prime Minister of Sudan, Abdallah Hamdok, praised the development, saying, we plan to take concrete steps to inaugurate the entry of our bilateral relations, which are making historic leaps towards a better future. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu praised President Trump for his efforts to bring peace to the region. He said, I want to thank President Trump and his administration for everything you've done and are doing for peace. You've achieved one breakthrough after another, bringing the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan into the circle of peace. The Israeli Premier added that he had no doubt that more Arab and Muslim countries will follow. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman says there's no going back on the positive policy changes President Trump has made regarding Israel. In an interview with the New York Times, Friedman praised President Trump for changing the narrative on Israel dramatically. He said the Trump administration recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved the embassy here. America also recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. It designated the boycott, divest, and sanctions movement as anti-Semitic. It recognized Israeli communities in Judea and Samaria and agreed to label products produced in the Jewish heartland as made in Israel. The Trump administration cut funding to the corrupt Palestinian aid organization UNRWA and it shuttered the PLO terror group's offices in Washington, D.C. Friedman said President Trump's policies on Israel will unlikely be changed by the incoming Biden administration. He said there's no going back on what we've been able to do. Israel continues to be the world's leader in coronavirus vaccines per capita. Israeli media reported that Jerusalem has agreed to provide important data to the vaccine manufacturers as the Jewish state inches closer towards inoculating its entire at-risk population. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu instructed health care providers to begin administering 170,000 vaccinations per day. The Prime Minister has worked tirelessly to bring the coveted immunizations to Israel first. He has secured 10 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine, and the Israeli Ministry of Health reported that by the end of March, it expects that 5.2 million Israelis will have been vaccinated. Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps has unveiled an underground missile base at an undisclosed location in the Gulf. The IRGC terrorist army announced last year that it had constructed subterranean missile cities along the Gulf Coast line, warning of a nightmare for Iran's enemies. The rogue Islamic Republic has threatened America that if it does not lift crippling sanctions imposed by the Trump administration, they will expel nuclear inspectors with the Atomic Energy Agency. Incoming President-elect Joe Biden has indicated his willingness to re-enter the disastrous JCPOA nuclear agreement brokered by his predecessor, Barack Obama. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cautioned against the United States reviving the pact with Tehran, warning that it would lead to further nuclear proliferation in the region. The hardline Shiite nation has already resumed enriching uranium to 20% purity, which is just a short step away from weapons-grade uranium. Israel believes that this is a clear sign they are making nuclear weapons. Israeli startup Aura Air has equipped 400 buses in Ireland with its revolutionary air purification system. Aura air filters kill 99.9% of airborne bacteria, including the coronavirus. The air purification system uses two patented methods. The first is a sterilizer, which is actually an updated ionizer, and a copper-laced high-efficiency HEPA filter. It also cleans the air using ultraviolet UVC light. The system informs passengers of the air quality based on seven different indexes. These purification systems are currently in use on several tour buses in Israel, as well as at the Sheba Medical Center. Roy Friedberg, the CEO of Aura Air North America, said the company is in negotiations with three big operators in Israel to install the system in buses for public transportation. 
A group of foreign ministers from Germany, France, Egypt and Jordan have called on the incoming Biden administration to participate in creating a Palestinian state alongside Israel within the indefensible borders that preceded the 1967 war. The Munich group demanded that Israel cease all current building projects in the Jewish heartland of Judea and Samaria, and it urged the Jewish state to maintain the status quo of the holy sites in Jerusalem, which allows for the Muslim walk to control the contested locations. This group was particularly vocal against President Trump's proposed peace plan, which called for Israel to retain control of 30 percent of Judea and Samaria, providing sovereignty for the Jewish communities there. Political analysts predict that incoming president-elect Joe Biden will adopt a no-tolerance policy for Israeli construction in the Jewish heartland. Israel has reported its highest budget deficit in its history. The Jewish state experienced three national lockdowns in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic and has reported a $50.4 billion deficit, or 11.7 percent of its GDP. The Bank of Israel has kept its benchmark rate at an all-time low of 0.1 percent as an expression of increasing optimism regarding the rapid return of the economy to a path of growth in the coming year. The Central Bank of Israel believes the GDP will rise by 6.3 percent in 2021 and the unemployment rate is expected to decline during the year to 7.7 percent of the labor force. Financial experts base their optimistic predictions on the expected success of the aggressive coronavirus vaccination campaign in Israel, which will hopefully allow the economy to open and create much needed job opportunities for Israelis. The Jewish people mourn the passing of one of Israel's greatest supporters, Sheldon Adelson. The 87-year-old philanthropist was a champion of conservative causes in Israel and the United States. He and his wife Miriam worked tirelessly for the advancement of democracy and the strengthening of ties between America and Israel. News of his passing was met with sincere grief throughout the Israeli public, and many people took to social media to honor him. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu extended his condolences with deep sorrow and heartbreak. He said, with his wife Miriam, Sheldon was one of the greatest philanthropists in the history of the Jewish people, Zionism and settlement in the state of Israel. He said Sheldon's efforts to strengthen Israel's position in the United States and the connection between Israel and the diaspora will be remembered for generations. After news of the storming of the U.S. Capitol building hit the Jewish state, Israelis look for ways to show support with their country's greatest ally. The municipal building in Tel Aviv was lit up in the colors of the American flag as a sign of solidarity with the United States of America. The white city of Tel Aviv was awash with the colors of red, white and blue. Mayor Ron Huldai said, we lit the Tel Aviv municipal building with the symbol of the U.S. flag to show strength and respect for the land of the free and the home of the brave. We are living in mysterious yet miraculous times. We've witnessed the most remarkable fulfillment of biblical prophecy, the Jewish people's return to Israel, and the prosperity and contributions of this tiny country in such a short time. Yet we've also seen an unexpected rise in anti-Semitism, which takes the form of anti-Zionism, and alliances between groups that are fighting against the most fundamental biblical values. In the book, Titus, Trump, and the Triumph of Israel, Josh Reinstein answers important questions to clarify what has driven political action from the time that the Roman Emperor Titus destroyed Jerusalem until today, when President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Get your copy today and learn how faith-based diplomacy has changed the world. To order your advanced copy, go to triumphofisrael.com. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. 
With me today is the director of Palestinian Media Watch, Dr. Itamar Marcus. Itamar, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for inviting me, Josh. Uh, tell us a little about what is Palestinian Media Watch. Palestinian Media Watch studies all the open sources of the Palestinian Authority. We study their school books, we study their official television, we study their official newspapers, their websites, uh, their Facebook pages. We want to know what the message is from the leadership of the Palestinian Authority to the people, what's the message to the children, because once we know these messages, we'll know, one, if we have a real peace partner, and two, where the entire peace process, or so-called peace process, is heading. And you've been doing this for a while now. What's the conclusion? Do we have a partner for peace? The conclusions are two different worlds. There's the uh, uh, external world of the Palestinian Authority, primarily in English, where they tell everyone what they want to hear. They present themselves with a peaceful face. And there's the internal world, the Arabic world, the school books, the monuments, uh, the paying salaries to terrorists. This is the real world of the Palestinian Authority. And this is what we're exposing. This is what we're bringing to the to the decision makers around the world. And in this real world where they're telling their children, what they're telling their, their people, what are they saying? I'll give you an example. They, they tell them not just in words, they tell them with images and with symbols. Just uh, recently we reported that a Palestinian uh, university made a new arch to enter the university. And what did they call this arch? They called it the Salah Khalaf Arch. Who was Salah Khalaf? He was the head of Black September who planned the massacre of the, uh, of the Israeli uh, athletes at the Munich Olympics. So every time a Palestinian university student walks into the university, he is being told that you are honoring this person who murdered the athletes. Uh, similarly, we have a school in Bethlehem for high school girls, which has a memorial in front to Ayat al-Akhras. Ayat al-Akhras was a 17-year-old girl suicide bomber. So every time 17-year-old girls in high school walk into that school, they're getting a message that it was a, an ideal act that was done by the 17-year-old Ayat al-Akhras. Uh, so they're getting it in, in symbols, they're getting it in words, they're getting it in texts in the school books, they're getting the message, Israelis, Jews should be killed, and if you kill them, you're a Palestinian hero. Yeah, I've been uh, familiar with your work for over a decade, and one of the things that is just bone chilling is actually what they're teaching their children. It's not just uh, high school students and people like that. They're, they're Sesame Street uh, type videos that they're putting up about uh, suicide bombings. Can you tell us a little about that? So, Palestinian TV has children's programs. The most important one is called uh, Beit Biyut, which means the best home. And for years, they have had children on this program uh, talking about taking rifles and shooting uh, and glorifying being martyrs. Now, you're seeing kids who are five years old, six years old on TV, and they're reciting about how wonderful it is to be a martyr. So that's what's happening. They're, they're they're incorporating these messages when they're too young to have any filters, to know what it means, and they're growing up convinced that martyrdom is the most wonderful thing that a person can achieve in life, that a child can achieve in life. Uh, I'll give you one of the most incredible videos, descriptions that, we, that we've had was at the beginning of this year, uh, Fatah posted on its official Facebook page a video where a little girl tells a story about a little boy whose mother gives him a rifle for a present for eating breakfast. And so the little boy asks his mother, why am I getting a rifle for a present? And she says to him, because you're not destined for happiness. You're destined for martyrdom. Our weapon is Islam and you are the ammunition. Now you've got to picture this. Little children are being told that their whole value in life is to be ammunition, to die for Islam. You child Palestinian, have no value in yourself, uh, no purpose. Uh, you're not gonna, you should not dream of growing up to be a doctor, a lawyer, uh, someone who's gonna solve global warming. No, you're, what you can accomplish in life is be ammunition for Islam. This is Fatah, this is the moderate Fatah, this is not Hamas, this is the mainstream of the Palestinian Authority. Now we're seeing this also in music videos uh, glorifying. Some of the top music videos are songs about killing yourself, getting virgins in paradise. Tell us about what's happening with that. Okay, so I'll tell you a music video that's been dozens of times on, on Palestinian TV. It's been running for a number of years now. Uh, and it opens with a, a man singing and he, and he says, Oh Allah, please grant me martyrdom. Grant me, in other words, uh, you want Allah to allow you to die for him. That's the message. And then in the background, while they're showing this, they're showing pictures of, first they show uh, Wafa Idris. Wafa Idris was the first female suicide bomber. Then they also show Ayat al Akhras, that 17-year-old suicide bomber who I just mentioned. So here they are singing and begging to die, and they're giving pictures and images of female suicide bombers. By the way, I'll point out that they promote female suicide bombers uh, very actively for the simple reason that 
it's been proven that it's easier for a woman to get by roadblocks and uh, to blend in with a crowd, uh, especially they can cover their face. I mean, today everybody's covering their face, but uh, they, they could be wearing uh, scarves and, and you wouldn't recognize them. So we have music videos encouraging women, even young, Ayatollah, a 17 year old, encouraging teenagers to go out and be suicide. One of the biggest uh, shocks when people look uh, at this in, in more detail is the actual textbooks. Uh, there's no mention of Israel. It talks about the day that they'll get their keys and come back to their homes. Uh, what's happening in the textbooks and schools as well? So the textbooks, uh, as you say, it's not just doesn't recognize Israel's right to exist. It absolutely rejects Israel's right to exist. This is across the board in the Palestinian textbooks. Uh, they talk about the, the greatest catastrophe in history, the so-called, the creation of the so-called State of Israel, uh, the, the maps that they show. Uh, for example, there's a, t a school textbook just came out a few years ago. Um, it shows a map of all of Israel with the Palestinian flag over it, and this is called the geographic area of the State of Palestine. The state of Palestine covers all of Israel. Uh, it's also fascinating, there was recently an interview with a teacher in a Palestinian school because there had been some kind of assembly. So they showed the woman, the teacher, standing in front of what was the map of all of Israel with including Judea and Samaria and Gaza Strip. This was what the map was. And on the map you had Israeli flags and every single Israeli flag was ripped over the whole thing, from, from Metula in the north to Elat. Every Israeli flag was ripped in half, and above it you had a gigantic Palestinian flag. And the teacher uh, was explaining to the Palestinian TV, this is our goal, that we will break down the walls, and this will be the map of Palestine. And then the principal is standing there, and then the interviewer speaks to the principal and said, yes, this is what we're hoping for, it should happen very soon. So children are being brought up, like you said, to believe that it's inevitable and just a matter of time till they will be the ammunition to fight and destroy Israel. Look, a lot of this uh, education system is actually being funded by the European Union. There's a lot of money coming in. You've brought this to legislators across the EU and individual countries. What are they saying when they see what their money is being spent on? So the Europeans, when they're presented with this material, they respond on the spot. This is awful. This is terrible. We have to stop it. We won't let this continue. And then they put in the complaints to the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority, this I know always claims innocence. Oh, we don't know. We'll check. We'll change it right away. Uh, and over the years, uh, the, probably the first time I brought school material to Europe was probably in the early 2002, 2003, very, very beginning, um, because that's when we did our first reports on Palestinian school books. And then they actually fixed them and changed them for a while. And then when we looked at them again in 2007, they were horrific again. Uh, we did press conference in the Senate at that time. Uh, and then it just keeps, there's a cycle here. The, ever, the Europeans complain. The real problem is that the Europeans never actually do what they have to do, and that's withhold the money. Say, so we're taking away all your money because you are proving to us and to the world that you are a terror-promoting organization. The Palestinian Authority is no different in its terror promotion um, than, uh, than Hamas, except for one main deal difference. The Palestinian Authority mentions that there has to be a cycle. There's a cycle of terror, and then there's a cycle of talks. The terror makes it easier to get concessions from Israel and put pressure on Israel. So there's a cycle, and you have to time your terror. We wrote a book about this, and one of the chapters in the book is called Terror Needs Timing. The PA promotes terror, promotes hatred, keeps it on the back burner, and then when it wants it, it pulls it out, and then we have another terror wave. And while there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show, what message do you have for a viewing audience? The message is you, you, you should look at what the Palestinians are really saying. You should bring the information on our website to your media, uh, to your members of parliament, to your governments, especially the European governments that are funding the Palestinian Authority. Don't let them get away with supporting terror. Uh, it's immoral. Uh, it's probably technically illegal. And you can help by getting the word out. Thank you. Thank you, Itamar, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. Shalom and welcome to the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. I'm Sam Grundwerg, world chairman of Karen Hayasod 
the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. We live in a time where the God of Israel is fulfilling His prophecies right before our very eyes. Join us as we work together to defend the covenant. Those who dreamed about the Jewish state, those who survived the Holocaust and found in Israel the anchor, the security, those who wrought the historical miracle and against all odds established a state, those who stepped into the breach and defended the young Jewish state, so many of them paid with their lives, those who arrived in the homeland to their new home, those who propelled Israel forward step after step, those who stand at the technological vanguard and the loyal partners who ensure the continuation of the Zionist enterprise. All those are Karen Hayesod, because Karen Hayesod is Eretz Israel. The return of an ancient people to their biblical homeland, a nation whose values inspired mankind only to endure centuries of suffering. The ultimate tale of redemption from the ashes of destruction. This remarkable story is the story of the State of Israel. It is also the story of Karen Hayesod. Thanks to the dedication of Karen Hayesod supporters, huge resources were available to make the State of Israel a reality. Founded in 1920, Karen Hayesod galvanized Jewish donors across the world in a unified effort to develop the infrastructure of the first sovereign Jewish state in 2,000 years. By the time the State of Israel was born in 1948, Karen Hayesod's funds had been the driving force behind the establishment of over 900 communities in the Jewish homeland. Its donors helped found many of the iconic institutions we know today, including the Hebrew University and Israel's Philharmonic Orchestra, ensuring that as Zachariah envisioned, Jerusalem's streets would once more be filled with boys and girls at play. Karen Hayesod's supporters also helped rescue tens of thousands of desperate Jews fleeing a burning Europe, bringing them to the sanctuary of the land of Israel. Ezekiel's prophecy of bringing dry bones to life had been fulfilled. Throughout the decades, Karen Hayesod has been there for Jewish people coming home. In the 1950s, by financing the creation of still vibrant cities, Elat and Sterot, bringing to life Ben-Gurion's vision of making the Negev desert bloom. In the 1960s and 70s, raising funds and providing a lifeline for the country's development during wartime. And at the close of the century, helping to bring immigrants from the four corners of the earth in a modern day exodus, rescuing tens of thousands of Jews from Ethiopia and one million Jews from the former Soviet Union, delivering them from danger and distress. To this day, Karen Hayesod's activists continue their mission of Aliyah and absorption. Last year, more than 31,000 Jews were helped to make their lives in the land of their ancestors. Karen Hayesod remains at the heart of Israel's development, as Israel's barren land has been transformed into a hub of creativity, innovation, and success. Karen Hayesod's supporters have been there every step of the way. They have empowered 2,000 pioneering young Israelis to reinvigorate 65 distressed communities. All of this has been achieved through Karen Hayesod's ongoing efforts to build unbreakable bonds with Israel among Jews in the diaspora, Christians, and people of faith from across the world. In the book of Jeremiah, the Lord says, There is a hope for your future. Your children will return to their borders. Every day, Karen Hayesod supporters are making this vision a reality. Thanks to Karen Hayesod, the State of Israel continues to grow from strength to strength. Let's bless Israel together. Now's the time for you to get involved. Assist Karen Hayesod to raise the necessary funds in order to bring Jews yearning for their homeland back to Israel. Your donation can help fulfill the biblical prophecy today. To donate and get information, visit our website at www.khisrael.org.
generations, American democracy has inspired millions around the world and in Israel. American democracy has always inspired me. Lawlessness and violence are the opposite of the values we know Americans and Israelis cherish. The rampage at the Capitol yesterday was a disgraceful act and it must be vigorously condemned. I have no doubt that American democracy will prevail. It always has. Secretary Mnuchin, welcome to, uh, back to Jerusalem with your excellent team. You were here last in October when you accompanied the UAE's Minister of State for Financial Affairs on what was truly a historic occasion, the first ever official visit to Israel by a senior Emirati official. I know this time you come to us following a successful visit in Khartoum during which Sudan formally joined the Abraham Accords. I want to thank President Trump and all of you in the administration for all you have done and are doing for peace. You've made a real difference, achieving one breakthrough after another, bringing the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan into the circle of peace. And I have no doubt that more Arab and Muslim countries will follow. I also do want to commend the maximum pressure campaign on Iran. Under your leadership, the U.S. Treasury has played a crucial role in applying and enforcing sanctions on the Iranian regime, and I want to thank you for your own personal involvement in this tremendously important campaign. It must be continued. It must be continued to prevent Iran from continuing its campaign of aggression and terror throughout the region, and to prevent Iran from rushing to a nuclear arsenal. And if we just go back to the JCPOA, what will happen and may already be happening is that many other countries in the Middle East will rush to arm themselves with nuclear weapons. That is a nightmare, and that is folly. It should not happen. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. To donate and get information, visit khisrael.org. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rom. And I'm Rebecca Rand, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us again next week for all of your Israel updates.